Hi everyone. Welcome back to our final episode of our five-part series on Mary our mother, star of the new evangelization. This is our last episode of the series and I hope they have truly made your faith more meaningful and joyful through your greater love for Jesus and his mother Mary. Hi children, I'm Audrey E. Thank you so much, Monsignor Hing. I hope you've enjoyed our journey together as much as I have. Last week, we explored how Mary is our mother of perpetual help. How wonderful is it to know that we have a mother who stands with us whenever we are troubled or facing difficulties. She will always, always, always pray for us and with us. We also looked at how Simeon and Anna were filled with joy and peace when they encountered Jesus. Simeon could not stop praising God and prayed a beautiful prayer, whereas Anna could not stop talking about Jesus with her friends. Let us now prepare our hearts to listen to the Word of God. Today, we will look at the episode of the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. You may wish to take your Bibles to read along. This account is found in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. I invite you to light the candle before I proclaim the Word of God to remind us that Jesus, who came into the world, is the light of the world that dispels the darkness of sin, evil and death and shares His light with us. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Every year, his parents used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan, and it was only after a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his intelligence and his replies. They were overcome when they saw him. And his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me? He replied. Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? But they did not understand what he meant. He then went down with them and came to Nazareth and lived under their authority. His mother stored up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favour with God and men. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now take a moment to let the Word of God touch our hearts. Fitter all 
In today's Gospel, we hear of Jesus, Mary and Joseph traveling to Jerusalem as they would yearly, walking for 145 kilometers to celebrate the Feast of the Passover. However, on their return, after traveling for a day, Mary and Joseph realized that Jesus was not with them and their relatives. They immediately rushed back to Jerusalem to look for him and finally found him teaching in the temple amongst all the prominent intellectuals and elders of the Jewish community. Children, from this episode in the Gospel of St. Luke, there are some beautiful insights about Jesus. Even though Mary and Joseph must have been filled with great anxieties and fears for having lost Jesus, their son, for three days, First, even as Mary and Joseph were the most perfect and holiest of all parents, we have to remember that they were fully human. And Jesus too was fully human. During their travels, Jesus must have been relating and intermingling very well with his relatives and friends, so much so that Mary and Joseph were very much at peace with Jesus and trusted that he was in good hands and company, even though he was only 12 years of age. Second, let us not forget that even as Jesus was fully human, he was also the Son of God. And so, the will and the truth of God, the Father, that was deep within Jesus' heart, was constantly longing to be proclaimed. Even though Jesus was very young, somehow during that visit to the temple of Jerusalem, Jesus must have felt the strong divine desire to speak to the people there. So he stayed back. And when Mary eventually found Jesus and said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. To this Jesus replied, why are you looking for me? Do you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? So in staying back, Jesus was not being naughty or disobedient. He was obeying God, his father's will, 
as being more important than the will of his earthly parents. Third, we hear that from that day onwards, Jesus went home with Mary and Joseph to Nazareth as the son of a carpenter till he was 30 years of age. But Mary, although fully open to God's truth, could not fully understand what God's will and plans are for her son and had to constantly ponder and wait for God's spirit to reveal to her as and when God chooses. Let us remember that God who loves us so much also has a special will for us in the way we live our lives. God wants you and I, like Mary and Joseph, to love Him and to love one another. But God's will and ways are not always our own will and the way we want things to happen. There are times when things and our lives do not go the way we want them to, like someone falling sick, someone losing his job during the COVID-19 outbreak, or some painful experiences in the family and home. During such times, we have to pray and trust God more fully that He who allowed this pain to happen will always be there in His love and care for us and will give us the grace and strength to remain faithful to Him even though we may not understand fully His will. This is like what happened to Mary and Joseph when they lost Jesus for three days and were filled with anxieties and fears. And they must have prayed so hard to God to protect and keep Jesus, their son, safe and from all dangers. And so, when they found Jesus, they must have been filled with great joy and happiness. However, when Jesus explained to them that it is his father's will that he stayed back in the temple, Mary and Joseph could not understand. But they accepted and continued to ponder on what God's will means in their hearts. Parents should continue to love <laughs> their children as best as they can, as deeply as they can. But yet at the same time, there will be times when parents have to let go and let the children have space to explore the world that they want to explore as children. At the same time, knowing that God is really in charge. God's protection, God's care and love will always be there for our children, for us and for the world, regardless of how difficult and painful life can be. God is always there. Third, children, we again see the beauty of the life of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, living in a life of simplicity together in the small village of Nazareth and finding holiness in the daily living of being a carpenter and living in humility even though he is the Son of God. Children, to live a holy life is to listen to and love God in the daily simplicity of our ordinary living. We do not need to have the latest iPhone or the most expensive car or the biggest house or to have plenty of money to make us happy. While all of these material things are good and are blessings from God, let us learn that deep peace and true happiness and lasting love in our hearts and homes that all of us want and deeply desire can only come from first learning to love God at all times and to put Him at the center of our lives. Fourth, children, we can learn from Jesus that even though we can live our lives totally in the way that God wills of us, God's will is not always mean that everything will be smooth and everything will run in the way 
we wish things to happen. There will be challenges, there will be difficulties in life when God allows us to experience pain, but yet at the same time discover His protection, His love for us. We may not feel it now, but the main invitation of God is to invite us to trust God more fully. Trusting in our parents' love and a deeper love, which is God's love for us. That when we surrender our hearts to God, He will always provide us, however we are, wherever we are, He will always love us. Open your hearts and I'm sure Jesus will speak to you in a personal way and inspire you to live a holy life daily. Fun fact, children. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, introduced a beautiful form of prayer that helps us to become more aware of our need to find God in all things. Almost about 500 years ago, this exercise is called the daily examine. So the daily examine is something that you do during the day or just before you go to bed. And I learned as part of the examine, these five things, G-R-A-C-E, called grace. The first is to be grateful. So we can be grateful to God for the many blessings throughout the day. And you know, children, when we are grateful, it can be for the smallest things. It can be for this delicious food that we ate. We can be grateful for mommy and daddy who've helped us through our day. With R, that's where we pray to receive the Holy Spirit. And with A, we acknowledge God's presence and His Holy Spirit throughout the day. With C, it's contrition. Contrition just simply means telling God what we are sorry for throughout the day. So there may be little moments where we may have done something wrong, consciously or unconsciously, but these are moments that we can tell Jesus that we are sorry for what happened. And finally, with E, we encourage ourselves. We pray for the grace that God will allow us to be encouraged through His Holy Spirit, or we can encourage someone else that we love. He's real, not can't be I'm dreaming I feel this vision. So but at first when I got like when God speaks to me, I thought it was my head. And then after a few times I recognized God's voice. Could differentiate it from Mother Mary's. My name is Julia. And my name is Elisha. My, my name, name is Gloria. My name is Abraham. My daddy's name is Clement. My name is Sharon. And then we go to the same entities. Oh! <laughs> we always say prayers after dinner. We say either the rosary or divine mercy. Then on Sundays, then we will have mass and then I read the Bible. And then I'll do sharing. When we say the rosary, and before each decade, the first Decade will always be for Thanksgiving, then the rest of the decade we'll pray for others. together, although we might not be able to finish it. Uh, so far, most we are early this year, so I'm happy. I always get a lot of music for my study, so when I say the rosary, I get a lot of music. I just say the rosary and I put my rosary in front of me for the exam. And then when I finish the rosary, I just put my rosary in front of
So it started after having the two of them where we decided to pray uh, daily. Uh, we took about almost two years to get it going regularly, you see. Uh, then after that, it, 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 when you miss a day, you feel you're incomplete. And you find that things are not as smooth as it is. And uh, uh, as compared to when you do pray, and you realize that it's not that you don't have problems, but you can handle it. You know that you get past it and you don't have to worry too much about it. So after we had Gloria, um, about two weeks later, it was, um, I had a heart failure. Condition uh, that happens during pregnancy. It wasn't easy actually because I had like take seven pills a day to keep the heart running. Um, but at that time, we were attending a charismatic prayer group at St. Anthony's Church. Eventually, within six months, I was healed and I didn't have to continue a medication. And exactly a year after I was um, healed from my heart failure uh, we found out that we were expecting another child and this baby we were told the gynae told us we should not continue with the pregnancy because of the previous heart condition they were afraid they would have to again but it was not an easy decision of course but we, we didn't terminate the pregnancy we went ahead with it and throughout the pregnancy I was fine besides being in the Emmanuel charismatic group we were also in CP couple empowerment program. So some of the values that we have uh, learned and embraced in being in that community is uh, you know pro-life. Uh. Yeah so these are the things that actually start with us when we are faced with such a difficult situation. So it takes time to see you know uh, God's uh, God's way of things. Uh. Yeah. Initially, it was very hard because when we come back from work, it was around, around 7 plus and then we want to spend time with the kids and go through their work but it, we managed to persevere with it and it's been like a few years now. Definitely a wonderful gift to, to pass to our children. You know, when we're not around, hopefully when there are moments where they have difficult moments, they at least remember to take the rosary and know who to turn to when they need help. You, you don't see immediate results. but. After doing it for many years, you can see that we have been doing quite okay. Uh, we don't have much complaints uh, from the teacher. So you can see that God is behind, behind everything. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry too much <laughs> if you put your trust in Him. <laughs> He's hyperactive. When we pray, He'll be running from one chair to the other chair. He'll be hopping around. But we let, let Him be and He joins in. He, then we'll get him to say a decade and ask him, Abraham, who do you want to pray for? So he'll think about it and then he'll come up with something that he wants to pray for and we let him lead that decade. He will sit there and he'll pray. Once he's finished, he'll run around and then most of the time, by the time we finish our rosary, he's asleep. Yeah, but I think once he becomes like them at their age, it will be different. Yeah, so <laughs> don't let his age be the deterrence. There are a lot of reasons we can give ourselves to not to continue and not to pray um, but we always try to try to complete the, the rosary as much as we can. So we even uh, incorporated in praise and worship to make it a little bit more interesting for the kids. Sometimes praise and worship songs for the children as well to keep them engaged. As a parent, uh, I feel that we need to lead by example. So if I were to like, tell them to pray and I'm not praying, then you know it's more difficult to get them to pray. These kind of things leave an impression, you know, on them. In the long run, it will be instilled in them, like, Where should they seek help? And they help them. So I think that's the best gift we can give our children. In our last activity for this Marian series, we are going to honour Mary as our Queen of Heaven by crowning her. Or you can draw a picture of Mary, our Mother and Queen of Heaven. We crown Mary as our Queen because she is the Mother of Christ and our 
Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father has given Mary this honour to be Queen of Heaven and Queen of Earth. Here's how we can make a crown for Mary. When you have finished making the crown for Mary, our mother, or have completed your artwork, you may wish to pray the Hail Holy Queen as you place the crown on Mary or leave your artwork at your prayer corner. I invite you to take a photo and submit your beautiful art pieces here. Our faith must always challenge us. We would like to invite you this week to do something every day to draw nearer to God as a family. This is one key aspect of the work of evangelization. We encourage everyone to rise up to the challenge to be an evangelizing family, encouraging and cheering each other on by bringing Jesus to one another. So, the challenge this week for you is to pray the Hail Holy Queen as a family every day for this week. Or spend at least 10 minutes before the Blessed Sacrament as a family every day during this week. In this very difficult time when we cannot receive Jesus sacramentally in the Eucharist, we can still certainly spend some time in adoring our Lord Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. May the time we spend with Jesus sitting at His feet help us to grow in spiritual maturity. I invite you to seek Jesus by spending some time with Him in our perpetual Eucharistic adoration here. Let us pray the Hail Holy Queen, to remind us that we have our Mother in Heaven to pray for us and cheer us on as we grow in holiness and make our way to join her in Heaven one day. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve, to you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. As we sing this song again, let us express our love for Mary, our Queen of Heaven, as we crown her with the crown we have made or place your artwork at your prayer corner. Oh, 
So dear children and families, today we reflected more on the last joyful mystery of the rosary that brings us to the end of this series. I'm sad we have to say goodbye for now, but I certainly hope that you have had a better understanding of the five joyful mysteries and will now help you to meditate on the life of Jesus. Let us continue to pray the rosary to ask for our Mother Mary's intercession to pray for our needs and also the needs of the Church and the world. If you have found this series helpful, do share this far and wide with your friends and family and encourage them to pray the Rosary daily. Thank you for joining us and for participating in this journey. See you again and let us continue to pray for each other. Take care and God bless you. Thank you once again for joining us and may our Blessed Mother continue to be with you and lead you ever more closely to Jesus. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>